Hello and welcome to the Trent Valley Railway where in this video we'll look back at the DCC bus wire and dropper wires for wiring up a model railway. This video is part of a series of videos that details the build of the Trent Valley Railway. Wiring up the track is very important for DCC digital control and particularly for those layouts using DCC sound which for the best outputs usually require a constant feed of power across the track. Before we look at the specifics of the wiring for the Trent Valley Railway, each track length or point work for the layout has been wired up individually. It was my personal choice to wire up every length of track just in case the metal fish plates lose their conductivity over many years. And by wiring each individual piece of track, this allows for the power to go to each piece of metal rail. Each track has a nominal positive and negative wire with red and black, although the polarity of which wire connects to the DCC control center doesn't matter as long as the droppers connecting to the DCC bus wire is maintained constant throughout. Such in my case that the red wire is at the rear rail when standing from the point of view in the center of the layout and is connected always to the red DCC track bus wire across the layout. For the point work, there is also a green wire soldered to the polarity switch rail, which will be discussed further when we look at the wiring coming through the baseboard and connecting to the point motors. After drilling a hole through the baseboard, each track length or point work then has the wires fed through to the underneath of the baseboard for wiring up to the DCC track bus wire. For the Trent Valley Railway, I'm using the Z21 system by Rocco. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it here and its features. I'll do that in a separate video. But the DCC track bus, which is the red and the black wires, go into the booster on the left here. This has its own power source from a transformer system and then it connects into the main Z21 with the B bus connection. Now, if you don't have such a large layout and are not looking to run lots of trains, then you can connect the track bus directly into the back of the Z21. However, the back of the Z21 for myself has the accessory decoder bus coming out of that. So I've split up the two bus wires, one being the track bus, and the other being the accessory bus. A future video again will look at the DCC wiring for an accessory bus. So this is where those track bus wires all come back to that you'll see throughout the rest of this video. This area is between the ground floor for the garage and then the fiddle yard above where the space here has also got an extra baseboard sheet included within the structure to enable two things. Firstly, to store other garage items that aren't to do with the model railway, but also to help me lie down underneath this section here without lying down straight on the garage floor to be able to wire up this part of the layout. These dropper wires are from the fiddle yard above and behind them are two sets of terminal blocks, one for each DCC track bus wire. Some wires were already installed from the previous section of dropper wires that I had installed, but for each of these droppers across here from left to right, they will now be cut down to size and the end of the wire stripped and fed into either the red or black corresponding terminal block section. This now illustrates a completed wiring up of the dropper wires to the DCC track bus and the terminal blocks. Each set of terminal blocks are then connected together with the red or black main DCC bus wire. For the dropper wires that connect to the track, I've used 16 slash 0.2 wire and for the bus wire, I've used a thicker 32 slash 0.2 with all the wires from Rapid Electronics. There are approximately 12 of these sections of terminal block strips that need to be wired up around the lower level of the layout. 
On one side of the terminal blocks I've fitted the dropper wires as I've just explained and on the other side of the terminal block have created a loop wiring system where each individual terminal block is then connected to another across the whole strip. At either end of the strip for the terminal block the thicker DCC track bus wire then connects to the next terminal block on the layout. Along with connecting the track dropper wires, there are also wires for the polarity of the electrofrog part of the point work across the layout. And these are the green wires coming through from the fiddle yard above. The green wires have their own terminal block strip, which on the other side connects to the gauge master seep point motors. Each seep point motor is a PM1 type with the built-in switch to switch the polarity between then either the red or the black DCC track bus wire input for the electrofrog part of the point on the layout. With the fiddle yard being the length of the garage and in this picture the droppers have now been connected and tidied up to those terminal blocks there are also then the next set of dropper wires hanging down from the fiddle yard above, which all of these need to be connected up to the DCC bus wire for the track and back to the DCC control centre for the layout. Away from the fiddle yard and now looking at the lift out sections for the layout, this is the back of the lift out section with the track on the other side of this and this is on the lower level of the layout again with this wired up for red and black wires for the track and the terminal blocks in the middle all connecting back to the main DCC track bus wire. There is also a green set of wires in the center for the points on this lift out section connecting up to the seep point motors as I've just explained. This lift out section then has the male pin connectors at either side to connect the power through to the main fixed sections of the layout. And here is this lift out section in place now with the points and the track connecting to the fiddle yard area all powered through the wiring you've just seen. On the lower level of the layout, the DCC track bus wire for those red and black thicker wires are then in a big circle around the edge of the garage with those terminal blocks at the various locations where the dropper wires come down from the track above. Moving to the wiring of the inclines and here the inclines are above the fiddle yard. The wiring for this has another loop, another circle of the bus wire effectively, which trails underneath the framework for these inclines. Wiring has, where possible, been kept to the back and the sort of wall side of the incline so that it cannot be seen when viewing from the centre of the layout. This is just in case I ever want to do any scenery on the inclines at some point in the future. The terminal blocks are again used on these incline framework here to allow for the dropper wires from the track to connect with the DCC track bus wire loop around the inclines and these terminal blocks have been screwed into the framework to keep that wiring tidy and you'll also note that holes have been drilled through that framework to weave the DCC track bus wire between the two incline sections where they meet up at the same height. At the corner areas, again, the DCC bus wire is threaded through the framework and next to the dropper wires with a few more pictures here showing the wiring at different points around the incline. Where the inclines meet the lift out sections, the DCC track bus wire changes between not only connecting to the incline either side, but also the levels above and below these lift out sections here. And at the very top, where the incline approaches the container depot and the scenery section, 
these points are instead operated by a Cobalt Digital IP point motor. And here, these have also then, are similar to what I've described on the lower level, have a bus wire through from one end of the lift out section to the other with those male pin connections, which will then create the loop all the way around the inclines and also through the scenery section at the very top, which we'll now have a look at that through some more pictures here of wiring up on the very top level of the layout. So in this area, which will eventually have the scenery section on top of here, before I actually put down the baseboards here, I've created the bus wires, uh, one for the track, which is the red and black wires. And there's another one here as well for pink and purple bus wire, which is for the DCC accessory decoders and other accessory items that are not powered from the track. Keeping these DCC bus wires separate is important here where I'm operating DCC sound and need a lot of power to operate all the different trains that will be running on the tracks for the layout and also particularly when they are going up the inclines. Putting in the DCC track bus wire here before screwing down the baseboards helped a great deal when finally putting uh, the track dropper wires through the scenery section baseboard and then just very simply wiring them up into the terminal blocks and this all feeds back to that main DCC control centre. As I mentioned at the start of this video, for this layout I've decided to wire every piece of track and point work to ensure reliable running of the layout to operate DCC sound. You do not have to do this for DCC, particularly on small layouts, and can just use the metal fish plates to provide track power from one track section to another. You may not also choose to wire up every single piece of track because of the time that that takes, and that's been shown as well also by the amount of time that it's taken myself to solder the dropper wires to each piece of track, wire them up, do the wiring around the layout and complete the whole circuit for DCC operation. Future videos will look at the accessory bus wire and wiring up the Cobalt Digital IP point motors from this video. And thank you very much for watching and keep a lookout for future layout updates from the Trent Valley Railway.